you did you just why did you just lie? You just lied. That is a lie. You are a liar. I can read this when you don't blow it through the screen in two seconds. Someone quoted $10,000 for a 50 minute animated illustration. God damn, that is cheap. That is insanely cheap. Insanely cheap. <laughs> Illustrators, I should have just reached out to the community to see if anyone would be willing to work on this project for free. And with respect to that, I say, Ew. Can you imagine how bad it would have looked if I had used my audience's labor without compensation? Look, I did the whole working. I mean, I know you fucking considered it. Growing up, and now that I'm an adult, I can fully see how, like, just totally gross that is. And I do not want to perpetuate a practice that is to me. Austin Sims incoming. Exploited. Austin Sims so are coming. I couldn't afford to pay illustrators for every single frame of the video. Yeah, by the way, Cornella, you can fucking time out anybody that has like, don't, don't time out people for disagreeing with me. But any one of those things where it's like, uh, I, I really feel bad about the way that he's addressing this. Um, maybe if you just listen to him for a second, then you could blah, 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 blah. Anybody that's saying boring shit like that and not giving me like on the point, just give him a little bit of a timeout. And I could not ask illustrators to work for free. What do I do? And for many, the answer seems simple. Don't make anything. Many have commented, if you couldn't do yeah. it the right way, <laughs> then don't do it at all. And to that attitude, I must respectfully disagree. I don't feel comfortable being on the side that just outright discourages creation altogether or like dictates the terms in which creativity ought to be explored. Because I feel like history has shown that gatekeeping art and stifling new technology never works out too well. You'd expect oh, that Austin, go. being a writer, would understand the moral issues regarding AI, but nope, off he goes to AI to make the video much cheaper and faster, robbing Based artists tacky tech. and living. Austin, do better. It's people who try stuff like this that are the death of art. You are literally robbing people of their livelihood. Educate Based Bernie 60 for the win. Oh, Bernie bro, chat. <laughs> aggressive attitudes aside <laughs> i totally do understand this perspective look i get it <laughs> this is like <laughs> literally i have a piece of cheese on my my counter you can't have it okay but like i think there's a lot of people that didn't get cheese in history and they deserve to have that cheese okay look i get that you think, think you can't have any of the cheese that's on my counter because you didn't give me a dollar but can i have some of the cheese no i mean like can i just have some of it though could i just take it could i just like take some of that cheese no you can't have any because you got to give me a dollar that's my cheese. <laughs> Big argument against using AI in any way, shape, or form is that I have to go with gatekeeping. I hate him. I know. And in kindness, I just want to ask people with that perspective how far do you want to take that? Because illustrators, animators, editors, YouTubers, and filmmakers use digital shortcuts like every day to make their visions easier to produce. And most likely you don't even realize it. Like Descript, for instance, is a popular YouTube and podcast editing tool it's that allows ad. you to have an AI double overdub flubbed lines from your recording. It can Ew. transcribe your videos, which helps. No, new no, 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 no. Dull parts of editing. Most of the major YouTubers have been using these kinds of tools for a while now without any objection because it's convenient it helps take like a f because like this is like you're you're, you're still this is I, I know you're being a worm now because this is rat shit this is absolute rat shit and it's fucking ignoring the art the the, the 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 thing it's the way that the ai works is literally the problem right i i used an ai tool in my fucking trailer oh clip him clip him clip him clip him clip him <laughs> you know what i'm saying um because and it helped me put the transcripting in and then I did it because I can just do that already and then it just sped it up a little bit and helped me with the timing. That is the same thing as using a fucking ruler, right? When I worked in the news industry, if I had to make a copy of something, I would use the copy machine, right? I would go to the copy machine, I would make copies of stuff and then I would bring it back because the copy machine's better at copying something that somebody else needs than I am. It does it way faster, it's much more efficient. What I didn't do is go to the copy machine with other people's fucking stories and then copy it and then hand it off as my own stuff. This is just a fucking, it's a glorified copy machine ultimately. A lot of these AI tools and assistant tools are fine, and I would never make that fucking argument. The 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 content aware fill aspect of, of Photoshop is generally fine for small little spot fixes because it helps you get all of that little bit in there. It's not something you would even need to hire somebody for. 
you can just blur it out yourself too if you want. But having somebody, you know, putting a little character there and then creating the largesse of your work using the content aware fill tool is the bad thing to do. It's all about you know percentages and quantities and stuff. And like, it's weird that you're not even trying to fucking articulate even that. You know what I'm saying? Like your your argument is like saying like, oh well, you know, carpenters go out there all the time, and it's actually impossible for the average human to draw a straight line. So what they use is a tool called a ruler that automates the process. Like, yeah, man, that exists. This is a more complicated tool than it was before, but the ethics about it are not complicated, and all the content going into it, it's just not. It's just, it's extraordinarily straightforward. <laughs> Wait, is this video just a big post hoc justification for the usage? Yes, this is his apology video to now, the people he upset in his audience. Dead for that? And here's the thing. What if they decide, you know what? I'm going to not use the AI. I'm going to pay 10 times the price and I'm going to actually hire a human editor. What if the editor that they pay just uses that AI anyway? <laughs> because I guess it's a dirty secret, but there are tons of illustrators out there. There are tons of editors out there. There are tons of audio engineers out there who are using these AI assisted tools in their toolbox to save themselves time and to get more work. Because when you are creating original works, you value time saving tools. Like you're d so you're fucking up again because you're articulating people using tools in 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 a fucking <laughs> In, in an ethical way to you using the tool in an unethical way. That's just worm shit, man. You're just being a worm. That's just a rat fucking, a, a rat fucking take. You know, you have to know it. He's like, if I'm hiring an editor to do all this stuff and he's doing a bunch of these assistive stuff, he's also still just doing the editing, which is all the stuff that you already talked about was difficult for you. Like you shouldn't even have used that. You shouldn't even have used that fucking point because earlier you talked about how it took you 20 hours to do that. So yeah, if you pay a fucking editor tw for 20 hours of work and then he edits together and then he uses some of these tools to smooth out things and get everything done a little bit cleaner, that's fine. Like a lot of these automated assisted things are generally okay. The big issue is using it to create the entirety of the work and undercutting good work in order to cut people out of jobs. You still hired an editor. I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Because if he's a bad editor that's going out there and using the tools, he's going to get fucking caught anyway. That's a whole other conversation. Did you know that crime? You are against crime, but did you know that crime also happens in other places? Because crime? Like, yeah, man. It's not a fucking new thing. For years, for years, I have used 2D and 3D stock elements in my videos. Fariba Starfire. Tyler, Tyler got recommended your videos about Shad's book like yesterday, and that's how I found you. So, oh, hello, Fariba. I'm going to talk to chat here in a second, but I got to get this done. become unethical. Here's an email I got from a guy. We're just going to call him Rex. I think it illustrates perfectly what it is I'm trying to say. As someone who has been a fan of yours for several years, I'm deeply disappointed at your excuse for a video. The entire video, the art, the movement, the voice, every single ounce of it was made using soulless A. AI tools. Not only does this leave a bitter taste in my mouth for the video itself, it makes me question my support of the entire project, wondering what other AI shortcuts you plan to take. How much of the novel was written by AI? True. How much of the movie will you use a computerized tool True. for actual artists? It makes me second guess my support of the entire process and makes me deeply disappointed in you as a content True. creator rather than supporting artists and voice actors. Congrats, Mr. Tyler. Oh, hey, Dylan Burns live in chat. Is this is this Dylan Burns editor? Thank you, thank you. For stopping by dylan's editor yeah, yeah 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 what's up what's up what's up dylan dylan can't hang out he's still fucking hung over in like scotland or whatever right i saw that video project two or indeed not making the video at all if you had no intention of doing it right you spat this at us and expected us to accept it i can yes. get an apology or a refund but i will be getting one or the other yikes so this sentiment is actually really interesting to me for a number of reasons because first off he gave him neither the spoilers. <laughs> the perspective that just because someone may use an AI assisted tool for something in an overall creation, then that creation necessarily loses all human effort. But secondly, notice like how the goalpost shifts to this idea that creative merit is somehow lost if any part of any creative. Nope, that's wrong. This is another rat point. If work uses any computerized tool in lieu of an artist, <laughs> I really don't. No, that's not the point that he was making. The point they're making is you're not being upfront about all of this AI usage and you need to be saying all of this tools, all of the tools that you've been using, they're concerned that you're going to have been using the AI for everything, which is like I said before, you know, if somebody plagiarizes once, there's no reason to assume that they haven't plagiarized 
before. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't just fuck up one time. My job is made a lot easier because of AI, which Tyler already pointed out, transcripts and removing silence, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still like, it's not, it's not the all of it. It's really, it's very similar to a ruler when I use similar tools because it, it gets there. But you also still have to put it in place and really use it. You know what I'm saying? But it's also like you're not doing the whole fucking thing. And then this is just assist you because actual video editing does take a billion million fucking years. Audio editing takes fucking forever too. So having different types of automation and stuff helps. I use automation all the time because as an audio engineer type guy, um, I can't move all of the sliders like they used to do in the 1960s because I don't have 700 people helping me in the studio. And so, yeah, I do have automations in there, but that's a standard part of the creation thing. It, it, it's You're not even having these conversations though also at the professional level of these people. You're not talking to these people. You're talking past them to the audience that doesn't know better. Like in, in the case of this video, sorry, not, 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 that might sound like that was at Dylan Burns editor. That was not, that was, that was still, <laughs> oh my bad. It, it, that's, that's the issue. You know what I'm saying? You're not sitting in conversation with the kind of people who, who can talk about this stuff and learning from them. You're assuming you're already correct, which is fucking bonkers. And also that People were meansy pants to me, to do with so this. they have to be Atlas bad. The animated movie uses a ton of computerized tools. It's literally a movie built upon computer animation. But does that somehow mean that like using digital assistance robs it of value or creative effort? The 3D models used through- But I mean, yeah, like it also, but yeah, the creative offer, yeah, tools do rob you of like the creative effort too, because like I, I, I use digital art, digital art, you know what I mean? I don't tell people that I'm not using it. First off, I'll be like, yeah, I made that in Krita straight up. Be, like, how did you get, like, if someone was like, how did you get that color in that print? I'd be like, oh, I used Krita. Not just like, oh, that's just the color. That That's just, you know, like, I, I would I would have an answer for that because that that's what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I, I'm, I'm rehashing the same opinion like five times. all made by me. Some of them are commissions. Some of them are royalty free. Some of them are like image scans because I can't model very well, but I can take an image reference and then use AI to save time in the modeling process. This happens in practically like every video game or 3D animated movie. That's, that's fine. Actual, actual 3D modelers do the same thing. Like if you had one of them to talk to you, they would tell you that they do the same thing, but then you have to go in and fix the little bits of it. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't, I can't hammer a nail in with my hand. I'm, I guarantee you there's somebody that fucking can't, you know, and great for them but I still need that tool to do it. That doesn't take away from the overall aspect of carpentry, but I wouldn't say that I put all the nails in like by hand. I, I would actually probably say that in a technical aspect. You might think that I said with my literal palm, but th that's not the case. For sure. <laughs> it's, so, it's so weird because all of these arguments, you either have to be, and I keep running into this, you either have to be so completely divorced from any of the things that you're trying to jump into that you think that this is like, you think that these are points or you're actively being duplicitous. But the thing is, is like, if you're just already gonna pop up with the video, I'm just gonna assume that you're being duplicitous because why the fuck not? Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, you might as well just get hit with the entirety of the wall, no rubber padding because God damn, man. Like, it's insanity. You use the, the three, I've, I know this because I see it. Like in random, like behind the scenes things, they use the scanners to scan in all of the fucking assets, but then you have to go in and, and make sure it all fucking works. And then you have to do so many other things too. You've got to go and make sure that your mesh layers aren't overly complicated. You've got to do the, the if, you got, if you're got if you a 3D person in there, you, tessellation, you got to fucking tessellate it or whatever the fuck to make sure it looks round, but also that, you know, your individual picture of a, a fucking swing set doesn't have 52 billion fucking polygons on it and is actually like three teraflops big and is gonna crash everything. Like, you're, you're not getting, going into and describing the entirety of that process. You're, you're literally latching onto one minute aspect of it, and then because of just the incidents of how words work, and that the words are similar, you're saying like, oh, but they're saying this is the thing that this is, that this thing is, but it's not, and it never has been, and it's, do you not understand it's fucking weird for you to say that? Do you hear how much I'm talking about your video? Like, that's how much information you're leaving out, by the way, which has been f routine for you. Unironically, do you not understand why people would be really concerned 
that that you're not up to fucking par on shit to produce all of these assets you're either stingy with information or you don't know that which is bad again is the dirty little secret most of those modelers will probably just end up using the same ai tool that i photogrammetry still edited by humans though right yeah i didn't even know that word keeping your toolkit it helps make the creation process easier like this email mentioned uncertainty about whether or not my book used computer assisted tools it does i use grammarly all the time because i don't like grammarly rhythmic tool that can easily detect spell Bro, are you, is this a fucking ad? Give me the ethical merits of using a computer-assisted spell checker. In fact, I know for certain that the proofreaders and the professional editors that I have hired on my books in the past use Grammarly too. Is that unethical? I honestly, I just don't get this. Like, just yeah, if you don't get it, then you shouldn't be fucking talking about it, Austin. Video, video over. We finally, we finally arrived. I was right the whole time. You either don't fucking know what you're talking about and therefore should not be making a video on it for a massive audience or, or you're lying. Like it's literally only those two possibilities. Present me with a third fucking option. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know that you don't know, I use spell check. It is yes, a digital tool. My wife is actually a fucking copy editor. She uses the spell check, but that does not remove her from the editing process because you're not just trying to find fucking typos if you're an editor. You go through and you check for consistency, for tone, for overused words, for 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 research and making sure that names are spelled right and that people double check their facts before writing to people. All of that stuff, it's a multitudinous skill and it's fucking extremely difficult to get good at it. It takes years. And it is not respected by people, and they think that you can replace a fucking editor with a spell check, and then you end up end up with dog shit like fucking Shadow of the Conqueror. Just because a computer does heavy lifting in some areas doesn't imagine being a writer who can't spell and has to use final grammar. creation somehow sold. <laughs> I don't. I, all I know about Grammarly is like I think it's one of those things that um, I've seen it advertised a lot to ESL people, which I'm fine with. Like if you are, if you can. You're just barely hanging on at like a level two of four in the English language and you need that assistance so that you can like, you know, do something like fucking try to hire like a tax lawyer or something or articulate yourself. That's fine. But yet again, this is the thing where it's like, is it a tool that you're using to bolster the creativity or just to replace something? Because if you just use Grammarly to just fucking write your story for you, embarrassing. Uh, like one of the most irritating, I started using Google Docs and Google Docs tries to fucking like write chunks of your fucking work for you. Absolutely not. There's no one that programs at Google that is as good of a writer as me. So there's no way in fucking hell that it's stupid little program that you attach to this fucking, this doc writing program is going to be able to fucking do a, a sentence selection any better than I can. Even, even like fucking half as good as me. Like, God damn, it's, it's weird. It's weird to me to even like think about that. Like, like it, it's just, could you imagine trying to make shit and then a little paperclip thing from the 1990s version of window pops up? Like, are you sure you want to draw a line there? I, I fucking, I would, I would Ron Swanson my entire fucking setup, dude. List. Right in the dumpster. Right? Like, here's an example. One fucking English 2. Shout out all my English 2 fucking homies. Been character animation. It takes a lot of time to make these 3D models move and speak in a convincing way. Animators routinely... Did you do... But you didn't do that. ...AI to do a lot of that work. I sometimes will use pre-made animations as a base and then make personalized tweaks as needed for each... This man just fucking literally is just using other people's ads for their programs. ...specific scene or specific use case. Oftentimes, I'll use references to get a particular set of poses that I want a character to perform... References is fine. I'll use a keyframing tool in which an AI interpolates the in-betweening. This is all computer assisted, and these tools are used in practically all animated. Okay, shout out, shout out all my fucking animators that might pop through this video, where he just said, I'm, "I just took three keyframes of those those poses, those three distinct poses, and I interpolated them to get an animation." <laughs> shout shout out shout out the heart attack you're suffering right now. <laughs> movies that you see on television and in movies. I just so again I just yeah I know he's just he's just completely missing up fucking mocap and stuff too these are reference this is ancient shit for animation again motion cap for 3d and honestly just doing video stuff I, it, it, uh, th does he know does he know about uh what you call it oh god it, it just it, my mind's blown is it no it's not mocap is motion cap but uh you know, um, the old, 
Ralph Bakshi fucking Lord of the Rings, like retro uh, rotoscoping. Does he know about rotoscoping? He's my, <laughs> rot- people have rotoscoping. <laughs> Are you saying that rotoscoping's unethical? <laughs> Like, saying it looks like where is the line boogers the sometimes. I mean, you're, you are absolutely free to say, hey, look, I have ethical problems with these production methods. That's fine. You can have that opinion. But you might just also ask, am I being consistent in this methodology? It just seems weird to me to suggest that I shouldn't be allowed to use certain tools to bring my vision to life because hypothetically, it could be accomplished in different and more difficult ways that are outside of my ability. No, 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 no. Not, diff- not different and more difficult. More ethical. The the whole thing is ethical, and it's weird that you're changing your fucking your. I'm not letting you slip on it. I'm doing this whole video now. This is probably going to be the entirety of the stream. Basically, is talking about you, Austin. It's unethical. That's the problem. It's unethical, and the reason that you keep going away from that is weird. Because now you're just trying to make a, a fucking argument that is like too hard. It's too hard to do it. There's all sorts of quote unquote shortcuts and roundabouts that you can use and stuff, but but you don't seem to know enough about this shit to do it correctly. And honestly, the the the, the output looks like ass anyway. Everyone could tell it was bad. I know it seems like a cliche argument that you've probably heard before, but again, I mean it is worth asking, do we outlaw calculators because mathematicians might lose work? Am I not allowed to use a Photoshop brush because I could have just commissioned a painter to do it by hand? Like No, because you can still own a brush. It's a brush. It's a tool. The thing is is you, if you know how to use the Photoshop brush, then you can make the painting, man. And I, 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 I doubt, I doubt a hundred percent that you don't know. Like this is just worm shit. If you are using a brush, then you're a painter, man. If you want somebody else to do that painting for you, then you pay them, and then they paint it. That's the, that's not the fucking ethical quandary. For emphasis, are the keyframes that the computer generated for that move unethical? Because I should have just hired a camera person. The reality is, Rex, the creators no AI assisted. Tools. You're you're the camera. Per- you're doing the cameras. You did all the moves yourself. In this case, you're actually performing the labor. You are articulating yourself, performing the labor that the camera person would be doing. You don't need the camera person because you did it. That tool helped you finish it, but it's a little bit. You set the, what, what a camera person does. Let's just go ahead. We'll get into it. Sorry, I got to fucking dumb this down. Just in case some fucking like uh, Mountain Dew addled 12 year olds pop through this fucking video. They don't know what I'm talking about. A camera person will be setting up the camera first and foremost because the camera just exists in a box somewhere until someone gets it out, charges it, loads it up, puts it on a fucking tripod, puts it in, points it into a direction, double checks all the lighting and stuff. If you have gaffer or, or, you know, grips and shit to actually do your light for you, that's fucking great. But you're also doing your lighting. I don't know if you knew this. I don't know if you knew this, but you're also doing the work of a, of a, of a, of a fucking grip and, and a gaffer. I mean, you got your electricity running in your house, right? You got all that stuff. You did wardrobe on your own because you dressed yourself. If you wanted more from those things, you could do it. But the cameraman would have taken the camera, set it up, gotten all these shots right, operated off of off of your, your, your shot list or whatever, probably been taking care of a shot list and double checking it, especially considering this is such a small thing. It won't be just a cameraman. He might be like the DP too. So he's going to double check your shot list. He's going to make sure all these angles are right. He's going to double check it with... Um, uh, you know, to make sure that it, that it matches the uh, the storyboarding and stuff. He's going to make sure that it's running. He's going to make sure that you 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 have like a constant, easy, good focused shot and all that stuff. You doing this like that? It's a little camera phone trick. That's fine. There's things that exist like that at the professional level. It's called like rack focus and zoom focus. Those are machine assisted tools because it's very hard for a human being to hit the specific notch that brings your fucking f two eight. Um, hyper thin fucking field of view right into somebody's right into somebody's face at the exact moment that somebody like walks in a door. Those are the assisted elements, but that person is still doing all of that fucking labor. Now, if you had a program that set up the fucking camera for you, took all of the video for you, and then did all of those things that I just described, then that at that point it would be an issue of ethicality. However, you're doing all the work. You are performing the labor at your own loss of time. Okay. The, the amount that you don't know about the things that you're talking about is fucking insane, man. It's absolutely insane. Like, you, did, you, did you let chat GPT just like write me an apology script for all of these fucking things? Because maybe if you would have sat down with your own thoughts for a bit, 
you would have arrived at a point where you're like, actually, I don't fucking know anything about all of these disciplines Every day, that are part of my life. You don't even realize. Like, when you watch a major TV show, the audio engineer likely used some kind of computer-assisted tool to help boost or improve the audio clarity of something recorded. What are you doing? What are you doing to that fu What are you doing to that fucking audio signal? <laughs> On set, virtually all. <laughs> all that was, all that was, was a uh, was a volume boost on that audio. I, I don't know. I don't. Th there's like, I, unironically, I don't think there's any particularly good um, AI assisted tools for audio production that I can even think of. There might be one that removes like us and ums type things, but I would not use it because I guarantee you it would fucking clip out chunks of what you're saying because sometimes it sounds good. You need, especially for audio, because it can sound so fucking bad. You actually do need somebody that knows what they're doing because bad audio cuts stand out more than anything. Anything in any other specific fucking like artistic discipline are audio cuts that are bad because of the way that your brain processes and prefers signals. Bad audio is like all the way at the top, basically because bad feel isn't a thing. You know, like, you know, you touch yourself, that feels nice. You stab yourself, that feels bad. That's very, very, like, spinal column immediate. It's the same thing for audio, but, like, audio is, uh, is a thing that we can actually make for other people. Just so you know, FYI. All major podcasts or video creators use some of these computer-assisted tools in their workflows, and if they didn't... I think my man is really just caught up on the concept of synonyms. I think synonyms are fucking him up. You might actually hate the result. Honestly, at some point, it has got to just be okay to stop worrying about how the sausage is made and just enjoy the hot dog. No, it's not. It's never okay to stop to to, to do that. That's like a that's a saying. But like, if we're talking real life, what you're you're trying to like articulate real life and little 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 baby talk kind of things. Uh, no, it's not okay to not know how the sausage is made. You gotta, you gotta go. You gotta know. There's people that do that. It's at the USDA. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not a good point to make. <laughs> and, and like it also goes back to my thing that I was saying. Like it doesn't feel like you're upfront about the way that you make your stuff, which is what people's biggest concerns are about. Uh, All of that. And that's just like I'm not going to be upfront about it. Is what, what that AI felt like. Have is the idea that these diffusion models are trained on copyrighted works. That is a much larger issue that deserves a discussion in its own right. And honestly, it's one that I am not really comfortable having yet because I'm still learning. I was told. A what the fuck does that mean? By the AI bad. What kind of fucking Colleen Ballinger bullshit was that? You don't want to have that fucking conversation because you're still learning about it. <laughs> Proud early on that, upon further investigation, is not actually an accurate reflection of how these technologies work. Now, my current understanding is that these AI image generators... You just said you didn't know enough, but but, but your current understanding is what we're going to use. Okay. ...reference images into essentially noise to detect patterns for various objects, so that, for instance, when you tell it to make an apple, cartoon style, it looks through millions and millions of these diffused data sets of apple and tries to figure out what the correct contours, colors, and textures are for that specific object, then it runs that through various neural filters to find an acceptable style, which the user can then choose from and... This whole, like, diffusion aspect thing is fucking, like... That always seems, like, hooey to me, because that just sounds like how fucking signals are processed. You know what I mean? It's like, we, we just know how, how the fucking... How the thing is shaped because we have a picture of it, and so we just have a bunch of pictures of it. It, it doesn't... It doesn't fuck, It doesn't really change anything for me, knowing that it's been diffused. That, that means like next to nothing to me because like all of the images that get fucking compressed in center of the inter in like the internet are diffused until they hit my GPU and are rendered. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it, it sounds like you're just talking about how like fucking photos work. And that's, that's weird to me. It's like, oh yeah, this is like, we know how like all of these different photos work. So we're just combining them, which is like the thing that we're already complaining about in the first place. Modify on their own if they so choose. I don't know that that process actually violates copyright. For sure, I can tell you. Yeah, maybe more copyright. people should care about how sausage is made. Yeah, that's a bad, bad point. a lot of transformation going on in that process, I think. Could be wrong. I've actually done my best to try and read a lot of the literature, and I admit that I might be misinterpreting the process, but the point is I'm actually looking into this, and I'm trying to think about it logically, and not just making like a snap judgment based on what other people have told me about this new technology. There is a discussion to be but had- But dude, that's so- that's just such a weird amount of different things to say. About how these new tools <sighs> interplay with our current attitude toward intellectual property. For sure, if- <sighs> Like, you don't know- and you don't want to make a snap decision, but you did make a you did make a snap decision. You did use the unethical tool. So you're like, I don't understand the ethics, and I don't understand the things behind it. So I don't want to make a, a statement on it. 
but I will use it. <laughs> thanks for having thanks for having at least uh, Nike uh, apparel companies approach to dealing with foreign labor. Uh, you specifically train an AI on a set of images, it will do its best to lean into that image's specific style. But setting aside the can of worms that is, can you copyright a style? Let me you just can't. reiterate. No, you can't. You can't. That's not a can of worms. You just you can't copyright a style. There you go. Copyright law. <laughs> that was established f by, um, but basically what happened was a um, play was being produced. It was extremely successful on Broadway. And then another company made a play where everything was basically different, right? They changed all the names and stuff, but it had the same sort of exact vibe as the play. So think, um, think of like Spider-Man and Superman being really similar in how they're laid out, right? Um, you know, you go through the entire hero's journey, but like Superman's like his own way, Spider-Man's the other way, but like the way that the stories are presented is they're normal. They discover they have powers. They start uh, experimenting with their powers. They come across their first enemy. Then you set up like the, the third act conflicts and stuff, and then you resolve it with them. Like doing it's the same superhero story over and over again. What they decided in that Supreme Court decision was that um, style cannot be copywritten because first off it's almost impossible to exactly articulate it um it also doesn't fall underneath the um the specific the specific specificities the specific things that you need to have on paper so to say like literally on paper the the, the record creation aspect of it um the the specific plots um names and all of that shit when it's when it's a holistic creation that is copyrightable but a style is not copyrightable um, basically for the same reason, I can actually have this conversation. Sorry. I, I just actually know this shit. See, if you just fucking actually do the reading, it's super fucking easy. Like you can just talk about it. Um, it's for the same reason and in, in a philosophical way that you can't copyright a dance move, right? You cannot copyright dance moves because dance moves are inherent to the, the fundamental functions of the world, the fundamental functions of the human body, Right. Me being able to do this, if somebody else could copyright that and then charge me money for it, would be inherently stifling the creativity, but more to the point, make it impossible to do anything. So style is, in the Supreme Court's decision, basically, articulated as an aspect of the human condition, trying to figure out how to do things in a certain way. And I think everybody can generally agree that making that more open to being copied as opposed to less open to being copied is, is for the best because then you can have similar styles of music. So to say, you know, depending on the observer and how much they know about the thing at hand, you could say that, um, Danny Brown and death grips are similar because they're modern, uh, hip hop electronic acts that are really popular through um, extremely online type people and they have a lot of audience crossover. Anybody that's observing the two bands are, are just going to be like, you're out of your fucking mind. But um, having, if, the, if you permitted that they could say like, well, that's just ripping off my style. That's completely copying my style. Then you would, you would be actually stifling creativity. So that's the decision um, basically. And the info, I don't know if anybody has anything to add to that. Must style. <laughs> Can you not copyright recipes too? You cannot copyright recipes because it's a basic way of how the recipes, how, it, it, it's a fundamental aspect of creation, right? You can copyright a recipe book and you can trademark recipes, which is an entire different thing. So like you can say that one type of recipe and describing this recipe, like, you know, the, you could put all 12 blends of herb and spices that go into KFC in your chicken and sell it but you can't sell it as KFC chicken, even if it's exactly the same, because that's an infringement on trademark, not infringement on copyright. Um, and trademark pr protects the ability of somebody to engage in trade and have their the aspects of their trade be revealed to the public without being immediately impinged upon and stolen from. These, these, are, these are like technicalities and stuff. I went to college, I'm, I'm that guy, and because of the degrees I had, an English degree, oh no, um, I ended up having to do a lot of First Amendment and copyright law uh, classes, like basic intro shit, and you learn all this stuff. If you're a, of a curious disposition, all of this information is free as fuck online. You can look up Title 11, whatever it is, uh, United States copyright law, 480 fucking pages 
of the most eye bleeding shit you've ever seen in your life. And you can experience what I experienced for a semester underneath a judge that taught the class, a literal sitting judge taught my first amendment law class. You can copyright dance moves because you just got served. I'll show myself. out. You're lucky. It's not the end of the stream because I would have absolutely hit you with a fucking timeout. <laughs> oh my God. All right, let's try to get this done. That for the Spider Queen storybook, AI models were either trained on images I personally drew or commissioned or licensed or were produced through an AI that the company claims has only been trained on images. That the company claims. There you go. That's the L. Were public domain or that they have specifically paid a license for. This, I think. And you're the guy who's like, I don't know. I want to know how the sausage is made. So you're just like saying like, hey, they may or may not have used unethical sourcing. Like that's fucked. That's fucked up, man. That you just said it. You said the loud part out loud. <laughs> At least currently is the most ethical method for using generative fill software. So here's the question. Is it okay for me to use fillers and filters if those reference materials have all been properly licensed by myself or a stock software company? But if even that use case is off limits, then we really need to consider how consistent You're conflating stuff again. be with that barometer. Leonardo da Vinci traced the outline for the Mona Lisa. Michelangelo used human models for his paintings. Rembrandt used camera fine, fine. obscura. As technology fine. develops, so do the artists using them. Norman Rock. Those things are not in any way. I cannot type. <laughs> Comparing using camera obscura to AI is madness. Because the motherfucker's still painted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Also, tracing is uh, generally like fine, right? Within certain limitations. It's actually very similar to AI. Every time you've ever drawn a straight line with a ruler, you have traced the ruler. Every time you use a compass, you are tracing a circle. That's why, right? I know why, right? You can use aspects of tracing in art content. It's, it's, it's generally accepted because in the industry itself, it is not like it is outside of it where, where people don't understand the ethical limitations because, because these people are all part of the same organizations and in and, and, and like, you know, they, they, they are peers that understand their work. All the people that are outside of it don't, which is what we're coming across here. So people outside, when you say tracing, they think you mean writing down every little aspect of something. Whereas there are ethical ways of using tracing. If you want to try to draw Roman columns, right, on the outside of a building getting steadily larger uh, with the foreshortening, you can use a uh, like little piece that you made to trace it. You can literally copy from a Roman column and then start articulating that. If you want to have a bunch of little faces and stuff, you can kind of trace those in and shit. It's the, the, the aspect of it is that it's talking about the holistic nature of the work. If you do just a little bit here and there because it's assisting you in getting this curve right in, in, in trying to figure out and understand the final shapes of this nose, um, if, you, if you do color tracing in order to try to finally figure out exactly what pigment this, uh, you know, this bit of shine on somebody's cheek is, that's okay because it's not the entire fucking project, you know what I'm saying? And it's not all of your labor being boiled down to that. These are nuances and stuff that you're not having in this conversation. And so I know people are going to come through and they're going to be like, well, you're saying the same thing. And I'm literally not. And it's going to be fu I, 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 I really wonder why like guys like you are, are not just having these conversations like face to face with actual like creative professionals that can do a little bit of talking. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's weird to me at this point. It, it, projected it's, photographs onto a canvas and then painted over them. Comic book artists have used light boxes for years. The late great Neil Adams unashamedly traced photographs for his work. Even modern illustrators use Photoshop and hold on. Neil Adams unashamedly this traced. Is. The best way to learn to draw quickly is to trace photographs. That is actually good advice. He's not saying that he traced every single fucking character he drew because that. You did you just why did you just lie? You just lied. That is a lie. You are a liar. I can read this when you don't blow it through the screen in two seconds. This is one of the best ways to learn how to draw quickly because you can try to figure out how to place volume on different aspects of a human body of anything in order to articulate 
what parts of the human eye or what parts of that thing the human eye is detecting as volume. So if you try to draw my eye and draw on every little line and stuff with a pen and paper, my, you're going to draw a big fucking black mess. But if you take a picture of me and figure out that you can trace this little line right here, just a touch of this and a little bit of that over and over and over again, then you can learn how to articulate the different things and then draw from imagination, which is always going to be faster because you don't have to find reference, especially if you've done so much lifestyle drawing that you have an internal fucking encyclopedia of faces, bodies, poses, shapes, and everything that you can just literally fucking pop off at any second. And those aren't things that are like, it's a lifetime and you'll never be able to achieve it. Oh, I'm just a poor boy and I work at the fucking McDonald's and it's hard to, 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 to mix up my drawing practice with the five hours of night I spend on Tarkov. Like, man, you can just fucking practice that shit. I did. I did. I just practiced for like two years and then I can draw now. I can just draw. I'm not like the best drawer, but I can do basic line art. Just practice. Photographs okay. for his work. Even modern illustrators use Photoshop and Illustrator or other software with reference material to recreate, modify, and manipulate said images to create original works. If it's okay for... Yeah, but you're just you're just not articulating the context that they're doing. It. Reference images that they then add their. It's called a false equivalency. Layer two, and if it was okay for human artists to use emerging technologies of their time to help them advance in their own artistic abilities, where do we draw the line for today? Because there is a world of difference between typing in the prompt "make a yellow banana," then taking that image without modification and using it to sell a line of T-shirts, and using royalty-free he do this though audio assets as the building blocks for a fully produced, mixed, and transformed work. Like so now you're conflating the things again. What what you're doing is you're conflating copyright now and like copyright law with ethicality. So like this is this is what you guys do. This is what's fucking irritating as shit to me about this stuff. You are yet again, and I've said this before, you're trying to cross argue different points with facts from another point. There's multiple points against why it's wrong, right? This is a clear articulation of a violation of copyright because you've fully reprinted something without permission. That is a violation of copyright. This is probably not because it's been basically fucking changed a violation of copyright. It is not a violation of copyright unless there's parts of it that might actually be, you'd have to find out. What it is, is unethical. This is unethical. And it's unethical for different reasons than just the violations of copyright. It's unethical because of the way that it's, fuck your, the, the, the chat GPT, whatever the fuck AI things are trained, using that without understanding it as you already articulated yourself and not caring enough to find out. Um, that is an unethical thing to do. That's unethical, right? It's not illegal. But the main reason it's extra unethical is because it's so fucking borderline close to being illegal that anybody else with like, you know, a little bit of common sense would say like, oh, that's fucking weird, right? Weird that you can do that. Weird that you can do that. But you're, you're conflating these two on purpose and it's fucking bizarre. It, no, you know, it's not bizarre that you're doing it anymore because I fucking caught you doing it like 500 times. What I will say it is, is if you're watching from home and you're on Austin's side in this, it's fucking weird that you're falling for it. Because like that, that makes me less like a little ashamed of you as a person that you get duped that easy. Like, like the, he's just presented two completely different points and then crossed them up right there, right in front. You you just got fucking blah, 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 dribbled, hit you with the layup and you just fucking, you just, you just took that shit. If you, if you want to believe him because you hate me, that's fucking sick, dude. I, appre I, I, I appreciate that hundred percent. You know, Hey man, dude, I too have modeled my life after vengeance. I also have read the dark Knight. But like, you know, if you want to make that, that's, that's your life. You know, I, I fucking, I'm going to argue with the guy because, you know, I want to be on, I, I don't like you, Tyler. And I just want AI to be right. You know, I guess if that's you, if you, if you are honest with yourself about that in your heart, that's fine. But if you actually think this is a good fucking argument, you're, you're off the fucking rails right now, man. You're, you're, you're in the fucking wrong world. <laughs> Madness. Like as an outside observer, again, let's think. Also, by the way, free doesn't mean anything. I don't know why he keeps putting that up. This is inconsequential in copyright law. The 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 cost of something doesn't matter at all. Um, copyright is it, it does not give a shit about whether or not you're making money off of it. Although that will go into damages or whatever the fuck down the line. Uh, it, it is it is regardless of that. That's why Disney fucking sent a cease and desist to a bunch of children. Um, that had a Mickey Mouse themed birthday party that the mouse had not fucking 
like okayed. You know what I'm saying? It, they didn't make any money off of that, but you can't infringe on the copyright, even if it's free. Think about this like grownups. Let's approach this subject with understanding and with nuance rather than making these broad and brash judgments. There is. He's the one making the broad and brash Clearly judgments at this point, also, by the these way. These two extremes. Can we at least agree that it is disingenuous to equate the two? Honestly, it feels to me like AI is. <laughs> we can't. People just see around every. We can't. Can we can't agree it's disingenuous? Original Spider Queen comic book from 1941, and several people in the comments asked if that comic's illustrations were AI, since they supposedly had like telltale signs, like the proportions were off, or the hands or faces looked wonky. When in reality, I was literally just showing them the panels from the original comic. I mean, you can check it out online if you don't believe me. That's just what the comic looked like back then. Plenty of stories are popping it's up of bad. illustrators right. who are being accused of using AI when it turns out that they actually didn't. As human works and AI assisted That's fine. That happens. More and more difficult to People get falsely accused of stuff all the time. All you gotta do is show, you guess you gotta show your work. Right? You remember math class when you were like 12? I, I did it too. Remember? And then the teacher would be like, show your work so I can know that you know how you did the, I, I can know you did this like on your test. Don't just write in all the answers. Show your work. It's the same thing. Eh, done. Distinguish. Actually, if you know more about like a lot of these creation programs, a lot of them have like a full back. Like you can just tell how people made it. You can have them walk you through it, you know, and they'll just be like, I did all these things. Especially if you're drawing on Krita, at least, you know, Krita gang, you can just fucking record while you're drawing and it will be an entire time lapse recording of your drawing. And then you can share it with people. By the way, if you didn't know that and you're an aspiring artist, you should use that more often. Um, it, it's in the basic setup of Krita and it will record little frames of you while you're working and it will stop when you're not working, I think. And so when you're done, it'll show the whole little project going and getting finished. And you can share those online and people love them. It doesn't matter if you're not particularly good. And actually, even if you aren't particularly good, you should still consider doing that and, and trying to share it if you're trying to improve because you might, in showing your work, um, come across somebody who's uh, willing to give you some advice on how to fix that. So just keep that in mind. Honestly, how far are we wanting to go with this? At this point, it's probably worth asking if some critics Very far, all the way. actually interested in the complexities of this subject, or if they are just looking for a way to feel morally superior to others. I'm super I don't feel morally superior at all. First off, I'm a bad guy in my heart. I think so. I like to, th I like to assume that I'm the worst person going into anything. I, I, I just, let me just say that. And I don't ever feel moral superiority to people because I'm already like a large guy. Like I'm all, I'm taller than other people. I can just feel that. And it, and then I'm done. You know, it, it's good for a day. I just go to the gym. I shoulder press 155 pounds a few times and then I'm finished. You know, I feel good. I feel good about myself. I don't need that. I think when you articulate that shit, people are just trying to feel moral superior, morally superior to you especially a lot of these AI guys, I think what you're really trying to say is I do feel like this is morally dubious and people keep reminding me of that. <laughs> That's all I hear when I keep hearing this said over and over again. pleased with the Spider Queen book and the various people that helped put it together. And as for the Spider Queen... Procreate has the same recording feature. That's great. I'm thankful that it gave me a chance to experiment with emerging technologies and the potential that they have to allow independent and upcoming creators the opportunity to share their stories to a wider audience of people than ever before. As this technology... Who are those upcoming creators, though? You know what I'm saying? It's not people that want to make stuff in that world. Because I have tons of, I have a Discord that is steadily growing. I've only got like maybe, I think we're pushing like maybe like four or 500 people in it. If that, I think it might even be lower. And it's full of artists of all different shapes and scale. Like they're all over the place. And none of them are like, I really would prefer to use AI to draw because they, they, they love drawing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all the people that you're articulating are not the people that want to do the things that you're trying to eliminate. That, that's just not the case. And you're not bringing in those people to this conversation whatsoever. I have them in chat. If you want to watch back through this and you're watching the VOD, shout out VOD gang. They're in chat. These are, they're, there's professional grade people. There's amateurs. There's pro-ams in my fucking chat. They will be in the comments of this video when it comes out. You can talk to them. You can have a whole ass conversation. You could step past your own fans and your hug box and have a conversation with multiple people, get a real fucking, get a real goddamn sample size in these industries and ask them what's going on and all this stuff. You could probably ask them for free because people just love to help people out uh, how they do these things and how they would speed it up and how not to act unethically.
Because I guarantee you, every single one of the people that's in my chat that has gone to art school, any sort of creative college, stuff like that, or works in any industry that goes around this stuff has had course upon course upon course about how to act ethically in their own industry. They get off of work and they go to bars and they gossip about people that they think are acting unethically in their industry. They bring up shit to talk shit. They gossip. They know what the, the deal is. It's not, it's not like this new thing that we have to wait for some fucking magic person to float down from heaven and say like, this is a-okay. You can talk to the people it affects the most right fucking now. You can go to, don't talk to me. Don't ask me for, don't, you're being mean to me. I'm a human being. Don't talk to me. Go, go talk to CalArts people. Call up some kids at CalArts. You're, I don't know, kind of, I don't know kind of audience you might have. They might get mad about that. That's why I said it. Uh, you don't know, just call up people at the Juilliard school and be like, Hey man, you're a tuba player. How do you feel about AI and tuba playing? You can just ask those questions. The people are out there. They want to share their stories. Most people are in some certain way forgotten by history. You know what I'm saying? But they know that they have a lot of value because they do, because they're human beings and they spend their lives accumulating knowledge and understanding and they would fucking love to talk to you. I guarantee it. I, I, you know, you're a bigger creator than I am too. So I know you get the emails. I'm not even, not even in this space, in the podcasting space. Relentless. I get emails. Hey, can I come talk to you about this? Can I talk, come talk to you about this? You made a mistake about that. Can I come talk to you about it? Hey, did, did you know there's more information about this that you get? But you're not doing that. You know how I'm not, you're not doing that? Because you just fucking talked on your own the whole time. You just said, I don't know shit. Who's who? What? Who is this person? I, it, it, the ethics are, are baffling. All of the legal questions you have can be answered by lawyers. There are lawyers, if you tell them you have a one point, that's a resource you have that's not money, by the way. And it's a massively powerful resource. 1.3 million fucking subs on YouTube, whatever it is, you can lever leverage that resource and be like, hey, would you mind coming on to my massive YouTube channel and talking to me about the ethics of, of AI or just relative to copyright law? You congressional or fucking like constitutional fucking lawyer or whatever the fuck or, or better yet no it's copyright so it's gonna be fucking specific you copyright lawyers you can you can leverage that and have those conversations with people and you could actually shed more light on this situation than doing what you've been doing which is just literally casting shade on it just casting fucking shade on it the entire time I, you, you go crossways with your arguments you clearly haven't written this stuff down in a way or, or just articulated it in your mind from the other perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just try to think what they're trying to accomplish in this. You just say, oh, I think people are just fucking, they want to feel morally superior. When there are people at the very beginning, the very beginning of your thing, I remember uh, one of the, the comments you used is a woman saying, I'm afraid for my job at what could only, what looks like a fucking, like a congressional hearing state, local, whatever the hell have you. She's at a desk fearing for her, her, her future in her chosen career path, which I guess doesn't mean that much to you. Um, but you know, Hey, like you said to me, maybe consider the fact that she's human, you know, before, before you go off, uh, making wild guesses, um, about what she does for a living and just assuming that you're correct in, in, in plowing forward with making stuff while Thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who it directly affects, who have a close personal connection with the subject matter at hand, tell you it's unethical, please stop. And there's tons of them out there that'll be like, we can tell you where these lines are drawn. I can, we can talk to you about how the tools work. We can tell you what we do and when we do it and how we do it. But you just make assumptions like you watched two behind the scenes uh, of, of like a fucking Spider-Man homecoming. And now you're just like an expert on how this entire apparatus goes. I know all of this stuff because I talk to people. They talk to me. I've done interviews on my podcast that I have and the other one. I have talked to people in real life about shit like this. I've taken courses of study. It's a massive amount of knowledge that I have on the subject. And even I will say uh, there's definitely stuff that I've, I've missaid and I'm wrong about or just slightly incorrect about. Your people and the way that you argue and the kind of people that want to support you will take even that small admission and say, Tyler just said he's wrong. Tyler just said he's wrong. He just said it. Clip it, clip it, clip it, clip it, clip it. He just said he's wrong. He said he doesn't know. And you won't have the fucking like personal fortitude 
to go and say like, okay, well, you know, these little mistakes, we're going to try to figure it out and work forward from it. You're just going to try to desperately find a way to prove that you're right and your detractors are wrong, which is what you've done through this entire video, while also smoothing it over with a fat layer of, I'm a sad boy mayonnaise. Um, and that bugs me. That bugs me because I don't think people should behave like that. That's why I started a YouTube channel. I'm new right now and I'm small right now. So if you're another creator and this is something, my kind of content is something you're worried about. Just be aware that I'm not going anywhere and I enjoy this. So, hey, you might be next. Technology <laughs> develops. Let's like, continue to have like, spirited and yet charitable like, discussion like, about the like, 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 and like, subscribe. subscribe.